I'm here today with a preview copy of Lizard Wizard. Now this just launched on Kickstarter this morning. It's already met its goal of 25,000. At the time of this recording, I think it's at 40. And there's a lot of things to like about this game. Hey, Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. First of all, the theme and the art, beautiful. Magical, fantasy, who doesn't love that with some great animals and things. Now those of you familiar with Forbidden Games, may recognize it as the publisher of Raccoon Tycoon. This game is very similar in terms of its, of its gameplay and feel, but has a new theme on top of it and some different tweaks to it as well. The wonderful thing is there's a lot you can do. There's interconnection between the different actions and resources and the way you play off of each other. So let's open it up and take a look at what makes this game interesting. Now this is the prototype copy, so things are a little rough, but you'll get the idea. Now just to explain this, now that it's set up, ones, threes, five, those are different, each for the different reagents. And so a one blue means mandrake. With that, this game is all set up to take a look at. The beauty of it are all the different actions, the different cards, and the different components, and how they intertwine to give you a lot of options. And so a set of basic things you can do, you can collect these reagents, you can convert them into mana, you can spend that mana to summon a familiar, you can spend those reagents to build a tower, you can recruit a wizard, you can research spells to get them, and then you can cast them with reagents, you can, with your familiar, enter in the dungeon. There's a lot of ways that you can interact with this game. And so in general, in the beginning, you're doing something like gathering reagents. So I'll get two nightshade, so two white ones. You're picking three of the symbols shown, so I'll just grab a toadstool as well. And then I'm increasing the value of everything down here. So toadstool goes up one, two, and sulfur goes up one. And then I get a new card. The opponent will gather some, and over time these will start to increase in their potency. And what's interesting is on another turn, you can convert these from reagents into mana. And it's not one for one, it's multiplicative. So the higher this goes up, the more return you'll get for exchanging. So let's say at some point in the game, I have three toadstools. I might want it to go higher, but I might be afraid that my opponent will just cash in on its value now. And so maybe on my turn, I'll cash in three, my toadstools, and this will go down one, two, three. But like I said, it's multiplicative. Five times three, I get 15 more mana. So I was at 20 before, now I'm at 35. So with that 35 mana, I can buy more research spells, I can summon more familiars, and these get more and more expensive, so it's helpful to have more mana throughout the game. Recruiting wizards is an auction, so if I have more, I can outbid my opponent more easily. The reagents can be reused in a lot of ways where they are used to get mana, to pay for spells, to build towers, and each one of these function in multiple ways as well. Recruiting a wizard gives you a symbol that can turn into victory points. They can give you more consistency with the reagents that they have in the corner. Uh, the familiars do all sorts of stuff. You can collect more reagents. You can get gold, which is the victory points. Uh, for each of the symbols that are here, so for every enchantment, I'll get two points, so maybe I'll go for enchantments. At the very least, if I don't want any of those, I can enter the dungeon. Now, the fun thing about the dungeon is it's not really connected to everything. It's almost like a way for if you're pretty far behind or maybe far ahead to either get really lucky and catch up or to just go further ahead with no risk because it's a push your luck kind of mechanic. There's monsters and there's treasure. You can flip as much as you want until you flip two monsters. The second monster means you lose everything. If you stop before then, you collect everything. So maybe I'll get a treasure, already a monster. That's pretty unfortunate. I think I should just push my luck further. Well, I lost it already. Let's say in a future turn, 
Hopefully I get a little luckier. Oh, monster immediately. One, two, let's, let's go for three and then cut our losses. Ah, lost it there. But you can see this could be a way to catch up because you're getting gold, which gets is equivalent to points. And so this is the beauty of the game. You get the lovely theme, the art, and the feeling of magic. While everything is interconnected, that gives you so much flexibility. If an opponent does something that messes with your current plans, you can make new ones easily and still have a viable way to win. So that's a quick preview of Lizard Wizard and kind of the elements and overall feeling that makes this game fun. It's on Kickstarter right now, it just launched. Go check it out. The board is updated a little bit. There's a little bit of fixing that they've done to the actual game rules and things that make it even better. So look at the official version and consider backing the campaign. So that's Lizard Wizard. Take a look in the description for the link to the Kickstarter. Thanks.